welcome. Today we are introducing Dr. Kelly Lee. Dr. Lee is the program director for the UCI Science Project, which provides research-based educational practices for the Next Generation Science Standard. In this mini-series, we discuss her wonderful book on teaching and the importance of teaching climate change in the classroom and how we at Aerospace can best bring our work on the subject to the classroom and so much more. In this video, we'll hear a little bit about her background and why she decided to write this book for teachers. Let's hear what she has to say. Thank you so much for having me today. Um, I'm really excited to share a little bit more about my work and my book. I grew up in the inner cities of LA and um, I went to a low income Title I school in Los Angeles and I'm a first generation college student. Uh, my mom is a Vietnam refugee and um, she came here um, during the Vietnam War and I'm just, I'm floored by, you know, her courage and her strength and I definitely feel that my love of science comes from my own mom. She only went on to about third grade in her own country before she had to leave but she was able to, at the time, secure a job as an electrical technician for Howard Hughes in El Segundo. And then when Howard Hughes was bought over by Boeing, she then started working for Boeing. And now she works for SpaceX, NASA, um, Boeing, and L3 Communications, you name it. So she's just um, pretty amazing with all the things that she can do. Um, but again, when I think about my own mom's journey and you know her raising three kids on her own in LA she always had two jobs in aerospace and aerospace was right in our backyard in Hawthorne and for me it just seemed that there were a lot of uh, challenges and barriers to entering fields such as these but I feel like my mom is a uh, is an amazing example of uh, how far people can go when they don't have to face those barriers and challenges and how much better the industry is when there's a diversity of thinking and um, you know, problem solving um, approaches just from individuals that have unique perspectives and backgrounds. And so her work has inspired me uh, to become a science teacher. And so I went back to my neighborhood to teach chemistry, nanoscience and earth science for about 10 years before I became an instructional coach for Los Angeles, and then uh, an instructional coach for the wider state of California, just supporting Title I to um, high SES to very rural districts in transitioning to what we call the next generation science standards. Um, and yeah, and I just had this amazing opportunity to be able to support teachers in the classroom to activate student agencies so that way they can see science as a tool that they can use to change their own lives and change their own communities and to open up more opportunities because for myself, that was definitely the case. The book was written, so this is the new book that came out this past year. Uh, it's called Teaching Climate Change for Grades 6 through 12, Empowering Science Teachers to Take on Climate Change Through the NGSS. So it's not that we're teaching climate change for the next generation science standards or uh, what we call the environmental principles and concepts for California. It's that we're leveraging those frameworks to be able to do it well. So that way, again, we can tap into student agency to see what they want to do in their own communities after they've identified uh, issues in their you know, lived realities to be able to then make uh, tangible changes, right? Uh, so the book was written as a guide and through my own personal experiences in supporting teachers across the state and also through my dissertation at UCLA in just studying what is needed for teachers to succeed. So uh, yeah, the book was essentially put together after I was able to collaborate with about 50 nonprofit organizations because as a science teacher myself, when I was supporting other science teachers, uh, we recognize that we had to teach climate change, but it's not common in our backgrounds to be trained in climate science. So if you're a science teacher today, 
it's very likely you didn't take one climate science class because if you're a bio, chem, or physics major, you're taking purely um, uh, classes that fit into your major, even your upper division classes. Um, and then if you didn't take any of those classes because you're not a major, but you uh, tested in, you took the CSETs, you passed, and now you get to teach uh, science, then again, you're not learning about climate science, but you're expected to teach about them. And so what we found is that teachers were not getting support who were already in the field, but then also in my research, I found that teachers at the university level in teacher education programs were also not receiving support in teaching about climate change. When I called uh, universities from public to private um, that offer teacher credentialing programs, I just wanted to study what it looked like to train a teacher in being able to do this well. And in my conversations with teacher education program directors, they all said the same, which is, this is important. We know we should do it. We know we have to do it, but we currently don't do this. So if you know of such a program, please do share it. And my search led to a dead end uh, when I was trying to support teachers because there wasn't a program out there for uh, our state that, again, supports our K-12 teachers in, in taking this on through research-based and evidence-based methods um, where we can learn from other states or other countries that have been doing this successfully in the educational realm. And so when I contacted the nonprofit uh, environmental agencies to learn more about how climate change impacts the community and at the community level, what's been happening and what to do about it, I learned so much. Uh, and then those individuals, I, I'm just so gracious for all of their help and support, uh, were able to network me up to our national um, directors at uh, NOAA and at NASA. Um, I got to connect to amazing people from Yale, uh, Cornell with PRI. It just, it just blew up into something unexpected in the most awesome way. And all of these individuals uh, were able to support me in putting together a multi-day program for science educators to take this on, again, in not only meaningful ways, but in ways that we know work because they're supported by um, research and um, evidence-based practices. And so uh, from that led, you know, led to all of this data uh, to, you know, that I had to use for my own dissertation. And then I used that information to put a book together because I realized I could only put on so many programs by myself. I was volunteering my time. All these teachers were volunteering their time. Um, and so I thought, I think a book would have a larger reach for those who are just looking for support. Teachers like myself that were stuck in the classroom thinking, I have to teach this and there's gotta be a better way than going through endless Google searches uh, because there's millions of resources out there it just gets confusing at some point where you you start questioning, you know, what is it that I'm supposed to even teach and how far is it that I'm supposed to go with the frameworks and how, how like the pedagogical approaches, how should I even approach it? Again, if I want to activate student agency rather than just positioning them as passive learners, right? Where they're sitting there and passively receiving information. Um, so how would I do all of these things with the subject of climate change. So essentially the book allows for readers to use climate change as the vehicle to get through NGSS, but uh, understanding that NGSS is one framework that informs uh, what is happening uh, in the book, but it's not the primary reason for why we should take it on because at this point it's a moral imperative that we teach the next generation what they need to know about climate science so that they can take action. Um, because again, it's so important that we have a diversity of solution-oriented thinkers and we need as many people thinking about solutions as possible as we think about bending the curve. So essentially that's just a little bit about myself, my motivations, a little bit about my background and then how the book came to be.